Okay, so let's get our chassis back on the table. Locate your front and rear drive shaft. The rear is slightly longer. Our upper forelink, our lower forelink, same thing out front. You should have a couple of upper and a couple lower. I pulled out a couple bolts uh, and we're going to also have our axles handy. So our rear axle and our front axle. So I like to actually put the links on the axles first, which makes it a little bit easier to access. So we're gonna back out that M3 by 30. And we're gonna pop in our stock lower links, which now become our upper links. Again, uh, like we've talked about in other videos, when you are threading into 3D printed parts, make sure everything's aligned. Because if you just tighten that and you're not square on the eye, um, you could crack this part off. We don't want to do that. They're strong, but they're not bomb proof. So we can use a similar technique to just barely have that M3 sticking out so we can line up our ball end. There it is. So that doesn't have to be super tight, just uh, get rid of any uh, play under the bolt head. Lower links, same process. We're gonna use the lower of the available two. With the bend nearest to the axle. We're just reusing the hardware that was originally there. ready let's do the same for the front same deal let's back out that m3 by 30 and let's line up our new links so we're going to take the stock lower links and these become the upper links with our new rod ends rear we're going to utilize the lower link holes and drop our rod ends Okay, so let me show you, I mentioned in an earlier video that, actually this one looks to be a little better adjusted than the last kit that I did, but if you turn, if you 
you turn the half shaft here, you can actually hear and maybe even see it uh, binding uh, as we're trying to get to full lock. So we're gonna turn these stop screws out just a little bit. So we stay away from that bind. You can hear it right there. So it's only gotta come out about a millimeter or so. We're gonna check it now. Back this out about a turn. I'm gonna check it again. That feels good. Let's see if we can go in anymore. All right, so right there it's uh, binding again. So we gotta come back out to where we were. Feels good. Let's do the same to the other side. Basically, I'm holding it against the stop, feeling for binding, and I'm backing it out until that binding goes away. This would be a good idea on the stock truck, too. It's right on the edge. Let's give it just another quarter turn or so. All right, nice and smooth. So if you want your truck to last longer, I would suggest doing that to your uh, stock rig as well. Okay, so now we're just about ready to uh, reinstall. What I'm gonna do is, we had a three link, so we had one bolt here and one on the opposite side. I'm just gonna match those up, so I'm gonna take, oops. I'm gonna take this M3 and move it to the back, and then I'm gonna pop in Two more identical bolts to the front. So we're gonna go back here. And let's go ahead and install our front axle. So the easiest way is actually to flip the truck over or flip the chassis. It's not quite a truck yet, huh? Flip the chassis over and we can see all our link locations here. So we're gonna flip our axle over to match. We'll let those four links move down and then we're going to put in our front drive shaft. So before we do this, you can decide if you want the truck to sit really low in the front. You'll actually need to relieve uh, the area of this cross base, uh, cross brace. The drive shaft uh, will actually start to rub it. Uh, it does on mine, it hasn't really hurt anything and I haven't clearanced it, but if you want to go really low, uh, consider doing that. Now would be the time. So you could use your Dremel, you know, with a sanding drum to do that. I would say take off a few millimeters. Take a couple of our still using those spare bolts from the original teardown and we're going to line up our upper links. We're going to attempt to line up our upper links. There it is. Thank you. 
finish. That's the front end done. Um, we're gonna do the the, the drag links uh, a little bit later, or drag link, I should say, a little later. If you just flip this over and let the front axle go, it's going to tilt all the way down and drop your, your uh, drive shaft. So I'm gonna run just temporarily a couple of zip ties to hold this front end together as we work on it. So you can do this or not do it. That's not going anywhere. Let's work on the back of the truck. So it's basically the same process. I'm going to flip the truck over. And we are going to back out the bolts once we have everything lined up. So let the upper four links fall in. Put your drive shaft back in. back up. over to the rear upper links. Again, I'm going to take a couple zip ties to hold this together while we work on it. Still managed to drop the axle, so let's put that back in. Seems they always come out easy, but don't go back in. in the way, but you know where these go. Upper, stock upper link locations. So now might be the time that you go into your miscellaneous personal stash of bolts or you open your M3 bolt kit, which I told you you needed. 
um, because we need a standard M3 nut. And we are going to also install these rear uh, link risers. So first thing is, this is the, these are the stock bolts from the steering knuckles. We're gonna locate the longest bolt on the left side. We're gonna put the nut on first because we need to space it up a little bit. And we're doing this to, to allow more upward movement of the front axle. So it goes bolt, nut, knuckle, drag link, steering link, and then use one of your nylon nuts that you have left over in your kit. get this one pretty snug. I want to make sure it's getting a couple threads of bite there on the nylon, which I think it is now. Yeah, it feels good. Flush. Oh, we dropped one of the links. Good thing I got more. Okay. So opposite side, same deal, but we don't have to worry about a spacer. So bolt, knuckle, drag link, and the nylock nut from our scavenged disassembly hardware. One quick footnote on the servo install. I know originally I said do button head, then link, then servo horn, then servo. That's not correct. It actually needs to be button head, middle hole, servo horn, then link, then your M3 nut on the servo side. So please make sure you do your steering servo just like that. We need to so we can allow that drag link here to travel past their servo uh, as you're moving the ride height. Thank you. Moving towards the back of the truck, we grabbed a couple of the longer bolts uh, remaining in our leftover bolt kit and a couple of the shorter ones. We're gonna run the shorter ones through this link, through the cantilever, and it, we don't want it super tight, um, just to run through this link. So we wanna make sure it's lined up. I'm not doing a very good job right now. Let's try it again. There it is. And we wanna make sure that we've got some, some free movement there. So come down, drop it in the four link, run the longer bolt through. it up just a little bit okay same on the other side and I went I think I went textured out there let's see yeah textured out so we're gonna do the same on this side textured side out some movement here. All right. So 
chassis is just about done now. We're going to move on to wheels and tires. All right. We're getting there, guys. Thanks for uh, participating. So relocate your wheel covers, your original wide front hexes. Locate the two narrow hexes that I supply for the rear. These wheel adapters are identical, so you have four. And you have a set of narrow and a set of wide pucks. The wider for the rear, the narrower for the front. Locate your original hex pins, your wheel nuts, and out of your original leftover parts, pull out the original front wheel hardware. So that is M2.5 by about eight. Locate the 20 M2.5 by 12s or 14s that I supply in the kit. That's for the rear wheels specifically. So let's start off back first. I'm going to make a little bit of space here. It's a lot of stuff. Hopefully we don't launch any of this off the workbench. So we're going to work on the back of the truck. So easiest way to reinstall these pins is to rotate the axle. So the pin is uh, parallel to the ground. Get it perfectly centered. And grab your hex. On the hex, you'll see that two points are in line with the uh, uh, slot for the pin. These are printed with 100% infill. So unless you're being totally crazy with the truck, these should last you a long time. Slight friction fit. And we're lined up. So to fully seat this, I like to take one of these pucks, just slide it over, grab one of the axle nuts, and go ahead and tighten that down. We should put the puck on the right way so we can grab the hex. So flip yours around, but don't do what I just did. There we are. and use the rear pucks because we're gonna leave these in place in just a second. So we wanna hold it and watch to make sure that pin is centered and go ahead and drive the hex all the way home. So fairly snug would be what I would say is the tightness on that. So you should see a little gap, a little daylight between the retainer and the puck. Now take one of your wheel adapters, put it on, put the nut back on. This will make sense in a minute. And get it to where it's kind of snug. There you are. All right, same on the other side. Slot. Take your rear hex, the wider one, sorry, the rear puck, the wider one. Hex side in. Real nut. Hold the puck and drive home the hex. Doing a very good job of keeping it lined up. Let's see if we can get it there. So I'm gonna push it in now that I can see the pin. There it is. Okay. fully seated. So let's back the nut back off. Let's take one of our wheel adapters, put a 
back on and snug up that nut. Okay, same process for the front. Find our hex pins. standard hex adapter for the front the narrow puck the wheel adapter and the nut just snug is fine side. All right, so let's start to reinstall some wheels. So these small ones are for the front, the long ones are for the rear. So let's start out front, and what we wanna do here is get these uh, two pieces lined up. The easiest way I found is doing this one time with a 1.5 driver, get the holes to line up like that, then snug it down, pull the pin, put your wheel on. Let's get our hardware going. So See if we can use a couple of these wheels to hold things up while we work. Again, this is where a uh, power driver will be your friend. So just snug on all these, don't go crazy. There's tons of hardware here to hold the wheel on. Star pattern is best, so work across. while leaving the two holes for the cap vacant. Go super tight on these caps. The snug is fine. All right, got one wheel on. Let's flip the rig around, do the same on the other side.
right, that's the front end done. The rear is the exact same process. So we're gonna want to uh, line up the hardware or the puck and the wheel adapter and then uh, send the bolts the rest of the way home. So let's do that all back. So again, fairly snug here. Good. Still windy as heck outside. Okay, let's put together some of the chassis brackets. So lay it on your desk, the left and right servo brackets. Now I want you to take a look. See how this has an R that's readable from this side, but it's backwards here. Same thing here. This has an L that's readable from this side, but backwards there. So you want to be able to read this from the side you're installing. In this case, the right side goes on the right side of the chassis. And this mounts to the first open hole. So if you put the leaning edge or you're able to read the right side, this mounts right here. So we're going to go ahead and grab a couple of longer bolts from our uh, spare bolts kit. The leftover bolts from when we took the rig apart. And let's put these in. I'm just going to use the two outermost holes on the bracket. If you want to run some extra hardware in there, you can, but there's not a lot of load on this part. All right, so that's the right side. Let's do the left. Need a couple more of those longer bolts. Grab these two. Let's 
Sounds like my neighbor's leaving. He likes to uh, he likes to let his sport bike idle for about uh, two or three minutes before actually going anywhere. And we're gonna need these other two bolts. So let's go ahead and get them. Same deal, make sure this bracket is readable from the side of the truck you're working on, in this case, left side of the truck, left side of the rear end. So just barely protruding. Gonna line it up with the first open hole. And send it home. So, got these brackets installed. Next, we're gonna make these two pieces. We're gonna make this little angle bracket. Notice we're using the single hole, not the double hole, the single hole location. And we're making this little sliding piece. Pay attention to how this looks. So, this flat spot goes up the side with the bracket is where we're installing the sliding mechanism. So, we've gone into our leftover bolts and we grabbed a couple short ones. We're going to position our sliding hook on the bottom, on the top of the piece in this orientation. And we're gonna tighten this till it just gets snug. It allows for a little bit of a friction fit. There we go. Let's do the same here. Perfect. Leave it open. Same on the other side. So believe it or not, this is the second time that I've shot this entire video because I lost all of the data on the first go around. So I should have had this ready earlier on the week with one of the gray trucks, but uh, that didn't work out so well. So I was lucky enough to grab one of these blue trucks from my friend uh, who has too many RCs anyway, uh, and uh, he got me back on track. So I appreciate that. Uh, his account is under Chunle, and he's part of uh, Rocco 4x4. Okay, so the sliding mechanisms are done and open. Let's work on these little brackets. Now, you might need to open your M3 bolt kit. I pulled these out of my spares, but these are not leftover bolts from when we took the truck apart. So open your M3 kit and look for bolts that are about 12 millimeters or 14 millimeters long. And what we're gonna do is insert them through the single hole opening. We're then going to take the larger piece with the fatter shoulder. So see if you can see that. The fat side of the shoulder towards the bracket. Then we're gonna take the small piece, which has a taper as well. This is gonna be really hard to see. But you'll be able to feel it. There's a taper towards this side. So we want the taper towards the piece we just put on. put our nylock lock on the other side. Nylocks locks are being reused from when we disassembled the truck. Okay. Let's give it a test fit. It should drop into this bracket and clip. There it is. Let's do the same to the other bracket. So shoulder towards the bracket.
tapered edge towards the piece we just put on. And nylock. And let's test it on the other piece. Good to go. All right, so let's install some of the other brackets on the truck. So we do need to mount the uh, ESC and receiver. We're going to reuse uh, this location here uh, where the cross brace for the uh, motor and transmission mount are. These are super short bolts, so we can't use those. Go back into our stash again. We're using some leftover bolts. Four of those. And that uh, should be pretty simple. I'm just going to drop this in place. Tighten the rest of the way. So we've got the truck on its side. We're looking at the right side of the truck. So the bracket for the right side uh, sort of has an arrow towards the front of the truck. And this is going to sit reusing these two pieces of hardware with an open bolt hole here. You'll also notice these are sliders where I found, uh, at least for most of the kits I've done so far, that sliding this fully to the rearward areas is the best fit. But this helps the cab to align onto the chassis. So we're going to take these two bolts out. We're going to reuse them in the same location. So again the rearward most hole remains open. You can put hardware in there if you wish. You'll need to run a nut on the back side. Slide a bracket out of the way to get the other hole started. And like I said, rearmost seems to be the fit. the truck over do the same on the other side Both brackets installed. The super scale, if you're using his module, goes up front. I'm going to go ahead and put that on now. 
and it reuses a couple of the same type of bolts. So there's an orientation to this bracket. You'll notice this little slot. The little slot goes onto the right side with these small shoulders facing back. There are three bolt holes here. We're only using two on the chassis. If you want to run another piece of hardware through there, you could. Um, but these two are plenty. So we're going to back those out. And this is going to sit right there. Now it's going to be a little tricky because when you pull both these out, the bracket that's on the backside wants to fall out. Holding it in place. Same on the other side. Oh, almost dropped our bolts. That's a lot of the brackets. We still don't have the front body mounts on. And if you are installing the super scale, I would tell you to go ahead and remove this front bracket and start to put in your servos, both front and rear. So let's explain that now. This is the mounting location for your rear servo. The spline goes towards the front of the truck. And it's pretty obvious probably by now that these are the mounting locations for your front servos with the spline going up. Both servos mounted here and the wires going through the bracket. So we kind of have a, a, a slider here. Your body mount will go in the last two holes here on the top bend of the chassis. It should be pretty clear with these tabs facing forward. So it'll sit and look just like that. Again, um, we're just doing the hardware and bracket installs. We're not actually doing electronics in this video. You'll want to remount your ESC and your receiver and do all that fun stuff. We're going to keep on marching though, and we're going to save these for the body portion. So before we get to the body work, I wanted to show these pieces. Now, since we're only doing a slider and we don't have electronics, these brackets actually mount directly to the rear servos. So I wanted to show you guys what it looks like installed. Actually, you can see this is the first rig, so the front servos are installed. You can see the super scale, ESC and receiver are back in. And then you can see how these rear brackets work. So you position the bracket directly on the servo. You run this clamp around the servo and screw it in. And you just get those snug and that's gonna hold this bracket in place. And that's in turn what supports the bed since the bodywork requires uh, cutting out much of the bed. Now there's some optional parts here too, which I'm not using. You can actually see Velcro on my truck, but if you wanted to run body posts all the way around, you can. That's why we removed these grub screws originally. So there should be in your spare kit. You can run these into either of these positions and then screw down the body post just like we did up front on the front body post. They're identical. So you would put a body pin through it, put your grub screw in, screw in so it exposes about three or four millimeters of thread, run into that hole, screw this down, and then drill appropriate holes in your bed. 
Now, anybody who knows me knows that I hate scale bodies that have body posts coming up through through them. So I'm really happy that uh, Traxxas released the new TRX4 Bronco with no body posts. And maybe for that reason alone, I'm going to buy another one. I have plenty of RC trucks, but I need to add that to my collection. So in any case, you'll need to add servos before you put these brackets on. We're going to go ahead and move on to uh, the body part of this video. Okay, so let's show one of the trucks with the bed cut out. You can see why we have to cut it out because these tires are just massive and when you bring everything so low, uh, they simply don't fit. I actually like this pattern the best. On my first truck, I cut most of the bed away, but I like this look. I think it's more discreet and it certainly has more structure to the back of the truck. You can see this truck does not have those body post holes cut through the bed. They would end up right about here and here. Again, if you want to run posts, you can. There are already some in the front of the truck, which we can't avoid, but uh, I'm not gonna put holes in these bodies. So let's take a look how this is cut out. I used um, witness marks that are all over this bed to make sure that I got all this square and straight. Easiest way to do that is with blue painter's tape. And we're gonna be cutting the wheel wells out and the one, two, third sort of rib on the uh, bed here. I'm going to cut it all the way to the front edge of the um, bed section and you can see this pattern. We're going to duplicate it. We're also going to take this body off. We're going to look underneath. All right, both these clips are done. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you can see how uh, the clips work. Actually, that one's a little bit tight. So here's the flat piece that's in your kit. We reuse all of the hardware and we're gonna mount these 90 degree brackets, which we made earlier, to the inside or cab side of the uh, bed. And you can see a little better the cutout here. Also, we're gonna do a little bit of light cutting on the inside of the cab here. We basically just need to cut sections out to allow these brackets to sit. And again, we're gonna reuse all of that hardware. So I'm just going to move this for the camera. So hopefully you can get a sense of how it works. So we're going to be doing that to the blue body next. All right, so remember how I said we would eventually run out of bolts. That's what's happened. Uh, you need to open your kit that you bought and pull out M3 by 6. You'll know it's the right length when you can put it against the bracket and against the plate and they sit flush. That's important because this has to slide by a couple other things. And if it's too long, they're just gonna snag every time and you're gonna start cursing up a storm when it's difficult to take the body off. So I'm gonna do texture side out or basically facing the back of the truck. So when the uh, bed is cut out, that's all you see. And we're gonna run then our bracket from the inside or the front. I'm going to use the same technique I've done before, just get it started. No need to go crazy tightening these, just get the threads so they stop. Again, these brackets will go in, inside towards the cab. So a little trick here for cutting out the center section of the cab is you can use some marks on the cab. So I want to show those here if I can. So the first cut is going to be perpendicular to the uppermost bolt. So you're gonna come in from the bottom, cut, 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 and you're gonna stop just past the halfway point of this raised shoulder. So the cut is here and then back here. You can do that on both sides and do it right now. I'm not sure I can get it on camera, but I'll do my best.
first cut. Pretty impossible to do this on camera. So we're going to repeat the process on the other side. All right. So that's what your bed should look like with that area cut out. And now we can start to see how this fits a little better. We're going to be removing this hardware. There's a nut on this side. We're not going to use that. These bolts will thread straight into uh, this PTG. So this is going to sit on this side. I just want to see, show you guys how it lines up, but it sits like right here. Okay, so we're gonna bolt it in in this position. Just putting the towel down here so we don't uh, uh, we don't scratch this body. Now, before we bolt that in position, because this bracket will be in the way a little bit, we need to go ahead and mark out our bed uh, for cutting. So again, blue painter's tape. And then we can see the stock body. I'll point to the lines that I used to line up. So I went right to the edge of this corner blue tape all the way across. I did blue tape even with the top of the wheel well. So again, blue tape here. And then I uh, picked a distance of about one inch from this edge forward. So even here, about an inch forward here, and then to the third rib. So reference the photos that you see online of the trucks or the um, part of the video from a few minutes ago so you could see where to mark it out. I'm going to do that off camera because it's too difficult on the desk. All right, so we've got the bed blue painter tape out. Let's review it one more time. So we're going to be cutting here where the arrows are pointing basically here. Here, we're going to stop here. So we're going to make a U-shaped cut. Then we're going to cut straight across the bed, up the side. We're gonna stop there, cut across here, down, across the back, and across here. And that will mimic the gray truck that you just saw. So again, I'm gonna to have to do that off camera. It's just too difficult to work on the bench and uh, cut at the same time. I'll be right back. All right, so I wanted to show the bed still masked, but cut out. I did something a little different here. I actually cut forward and then across here and just bent this down. Not sure how that's gonna work yet, but I've been doing a little variation each time I cut these bodies. So you don't have to do it just like I do. You just have to clear the cantilevers and uh, everything else is gravy. So let's wash this up and put our bracket in. We've got the body trimmed out and washed it out in the kitchen sink. So we'll see how this little piece goes. Um, we might cut it out later, but see how it looks for now. So next step is to mount our plate. It's gonna mount just like this. And we're gonna reuse uh, the hardware. So go ahead and back out all four of these uh, bolts. I just put the towel down here so we don't scratch this body up on anything on the workbench. All right, 
So remember, these brackets go towards the cab. It's gonna fit right in here. I'm just gonna use this bolt and push it right back through. I'm gonna leave it slightly loose until we get the rest started. It's always a good practice. So far, the bodies have been um, very similar in the drillings for these holes, but if you need to line things up a little bit more, um, just open them up a little bit with a drill bit if you have to. Not the bracket, the body. Tighten the rest away. If you wanted to, you could put some uh, of the nylock nuts back there. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's see how well we did. Let's get our slider the bench and hopefully everything just drops into place. Pull our body pins. All right, here we go. So make sure these clips are open and this should just drop down now. Again, we're missing the bed supports because we don't have our servos mounted. But there it is, and we can clip our body in place, put our pins in, we can actually lift the chassis just from the body here. But man, I'm really loving that uh, black on blue. This is the first time I've got to work on a blue truck and photos don't do these things justice. The metallic blue looks awesome and the stance looks really dialed now. All right, so there it is, sitting down with the bed cut out, and I think that flap's okay. I'll probably put some double side tape just to bring that all the way back to the cab. But there is the blue truck on polished wheels. All right, so last step here until you need to start installing servos is to reinstall your shocks. So there is orientation. You know, bottom of the shock goes down. Uh, there's a difference in the uh, ball cup here. You can see this one has a flange on it and this one does not. So when we install this, you'll see this is just a plastic spacer and a plastic nut. I just use some side cutters here and just trim this flush. So I'm going to do that right now. Still managed to drop it. But basically Put that back in the shock, slide that through, and run our hardware. So we'll go back into our stash of bolts here, pull out an M3 lock nut. on the other side here. So I'm going to back this back out so I can get that nut right against the cantilever. And my nut driver. So just snug, you don't have to go any more than that. So that's one side done. Let's do the other process. Pull, trim the 
plastic nut off the end with some side cutters. Reinsert that in the shock. The old school trick here too. The old school trick here, if you have some nitro fuel tubing around, you can just cut a section and stick it in there. So we'll drop our shock in. Still reusing a lot of this hardware. All right, so the rear shocks are in place. At this point, uh, you would need to install your rear servos. Um, don't do not put the servo horns on until you have everything powered up and you've uh, thoroughly understood how the super scale works because you don't want to have a horn on and power up and find that that servo wasn't centered or it's traveling in a way you didn't expect and it tears something up on your truck that you've been working so hard on so leave those servo horns disconnected and leave the shocks disconnected until you start setting up your super scale so we're going to move to the front of the truck and we're actually going to leave these alone because on the rear the servo is attached to the bottom on the front the servo is attached to the top of the shock so we're going to utilize this open position and mount our shock just like that so we need a couple of longer what was that tgh part and a couple of longer pieces of hardware so through the shock, through the axle, and I lock nut. side done and guys we are just about to the last nut and bolt on this slider so good job if you chose to join me in uh, making your truck super low probably not the best idea but it sure looks cool and it's fun pretty similar to what would happen if you did this to a full-size rig All right, that's it. So there's your slider ready for electronics. Uh, from here again, follow Superscale 2020's instruction and uh, don't forget to mount your bed supports after you have your servos in place. Should be pretty easy again to see where those go. One, two, three, four, servo and the spline on the inside here, so the servo horn can line up with your shock absorber. All right, so at this point, I'd like to say thank you for uh, tagging along. If you made it through this three hour video, congratulations. That's probably not the most fun thing you've ever done or the easiest, but you end up with a pretty unique truck. So I appreciate you guys uh, following along and uh, I appreciate your business. Uh, this isn't my main job, of course, I have a reg regular job like everybody else, so I try and do this uh, in the evenings when I have a chance. Um, and certainly took more parts and time than I had originally anticipated. 
in any case, we end up with a pretty cool looking truck and um, I plan to build a fifth wheel for it. So that's why it includes this bracket, which you can then use this hardware to uh, mount your fifth wheel. So stay tuned for that. It'll probably be a single, double, or maybe even a triple carrier. I'm not really sure yet, uh, but I think it's gonna look really cool uh, towing around some scale and competition rigs or maybe even a no prep drag car. So hopefully my Losi shows up next week. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to DM me. I'll try to answer them as quick as I can. But like most people, I have a full-time day job. So anyways, thank you for sticking around and thank you for spending time with me tonight. All right, good night.